What's the matter? Well, nothing, only I, I didn't know you was behind me. Hazel, why do you keep looking out the window? What do you see? Nothing. Ed? Dad, did Hazel tell you what happened today? What happened? She sent me over to a place called Miss Minnie's Mending Shop to get that thing you broke glued together. And there were two men trying to break into no, the shop. No, Sport, you were wrong there, honey. Those men weren't trying to break into Miss Minnie's shop. They was just trying to serve her with a legal paper. Oh, the lady in some kind of difficulty? Oh, boy, is she. You see, she bought this shop from a former owner on time payments. And the owner died before he could give her the ownership papers. Uh, I thought they were robbers. His heirs didn't know about it. Now they claim the shop is theirs. Well, that's pretty common when it comes to settling estates. But, Mr. B., they even tied up her bank account. Well, that's no problem. Any attorney could straighten it out if she has her canceled checks or receipts. Why don't you send her to see me? You mean it, Mr. B.? Your mother said you were so busy. Well, I am, but you know mothers. They're inclined to exaggerate. Anyway, in a routine matter like this, I could have one of my clerks settle it. You have Miss, uh, what's her uh, name? Smith, Miss Minnie Smith. You have Miss Smith come to see me the first of the week. Well, why don't I tell her to come over right away? Right away? Yeah, her shop's only a few blocks away. You'd be surprised how fast she can get here. Tell her the first of the week will be fine. Okay, if you say so, Mr. B. But with her bank account tied up, she could starve by the first of the week. <laughs> And she said she'd die first. She said she'd lie down and they'd have to carry her out. She'd kick and scream and bite every inch all of the way. All right, all right, Hazel, go and call her. Tell her to come over right away. Miss Minnie, this is Hazel. <clears throat> yeah. I just happened to mention your trouble to my boss, Mr. Baxter. You know, he's an attorney. Tell her to bring all canceled checks, receipts, and correspondence pertaining to the case. You hear what he said? He's fighting for you already. He said... Here, uh, let me talk to her. No, no, I'll tell her. I'll, I'll, I'll tell her. Uh, uh, he said uh, to bring all the canceled checks and receipts and, and correspondence, you know, everything pertaining to the case. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff he wants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yes? Mr. Baxter, I'm Miss Minnie. Hazel says you're my attorney. Anything that has anything to do with Mr. Beatty. How soon do you think you could get over here? Oh, fine. She says she can get over before you bat an eye. Bye! Hello, Hazel. Uh, how far away is your shop? Oh, about eight or ten blocks. Oh, but, but they're, you know, they're very short blocks. You, you wouldn't even call them blocks. Nevertheless, Miss Minnie, if you can run that fast, you have nothing to fear from the law. Nobody could ever catch you to serve a subpoena. Did you have much trouble, George? Not a bit, Mother. The judge took care of everything. However, she should have called a lawyer in in the first place. You see, that's the trouble with a lot of people. They are so afraid of courts and judges that they don't call in a lawyer until things are in a complicated mess. Oh, Mr. B., I hope I didn't get you into any trouble. Oh, not a bit, Hazel. As a matter of fact, I'm very grateful to you. You see, we met in the judge's chambers, and I had an opportunity to discuss another legal matter, which saved me a lot of time and trouble. Oh, that's likely Mr. Griffin. He always arrives at dinner time, just like the elephant at the water hole. Oh, Hazel. Oh, I I'm terribly sorry to disturb you during dinner time. Oh, that's all right, Miss Minnie. Come on in. Well, Mr. Baxter wouldn't accept any money for what he did for me, so I brought him a present. <laughs> Mr. B, come here. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> 